Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Guy Duke, and welcome to this first in um, a series of two dialogues that uh, We Value Nature is running to bring together the Valuing Nature community in Europe and beyond. We Value Nature is a campaign that dedicated to accelerating change to make valuing nature the new norm in business across Europe. The European Green Deal provides an appraisal of the current state and future trajectories of the systems, the sociological systems uh, across Europe um, on which the EU depends and describes transformations required to create a sustainable Europe. Uh, this includes moving to net zero on carbon emissions and protecting and restoring nature. And this will require a wholesale transformation in the way we do business, moving businesses to nature positive and net zero. This first dialogue is a retrospective uh, dialogue. The purpose is to assess the state of play on making valuing nature the new norm for businesses in Europe. How has the operating landscape for efforts to support this transition changed? over the last two to three years? How much progress are we making? What actions and resources have we found most effective? And what barriers are proving difficult to surmount? A second dialogue planned for January, and we will be uh, adjusting the date for that, and we will let you know uh, shortly what that date will be. That second dialogue will be more forward-looking and will consider what further action and investment is required to accelerate the transition to nature positive. Today's dialogue um, was billed as a two hour event. We aim to finish a little earlier by around 11.45. We've not planned any break. So if you do need to step away for a few minutes at any moment, please do so. Before we go any further today, I'll just uh, outline a few house rules. So um, please make sure you're joining us through uh, a Zoom app or uh, Zoom on your desktop. Please change your username uh, to your full name and your organization so we know uh, who you're with. You can submit any comments as usual uh, through using the chat function at the bottom of your screen. We invite you to turn on your camera uh, when you're speaking. Uh, we will have some Q&A sessions and a feedback session later on. So uh, when you're speaking, please do turn your camera on. This session for your information is being recorded and uh, slides and the recording will be shared afterwards. We'll also be using Menti today. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Menti. Uh, this will uh, invite you to contribute and share your experiences on a couple of Menti questions. Um, please uh, finally uh, ensure that you are mute uh, when you're not taking part in discussions. Thank you for that, James. So um, we have a number of the We Value Nature team with us today, and we'll um, introduce them um, when they uh, are, are about to speak. Um, while um, we are speaking, we've got a number, number of presentations. I'd like you to please introduce yourselves in the chat. Let us know, perhaps in a couple of sentences, your role in your organization and what your work focuses on so we know a bit more about you. So before I hand over to our first speaker, um, I'm going to uh, run a Menti poll. We're gonna run a Menti poll. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Menti. Uh, just go to menti.com on your phone uh, or laptop. Uh, James, would you like to just run through the, uh, the, the uh, basics on Menti? Yes, sure. So as Guy said, um, it, it works quite nicely on a mobile phone, but if you don't have a mobile phone handy, um, you can just open a tab on your internet browser and go to that website on the screen, uh, menti.com, and enter the code 85095162. Um, that code is always displayed on the top, and if you're feeling uh, confident, you can, you, can, you can try out that QR code on the screen as well. And if, you, if anyone has any issues, just post a comment in the chat and, uh, and we'll try and get to you. Many thanks, James. Um, could we see uh, the uh, Menti question or just uh, perhaps introduce it um, if people, while people are going to menti.com. So please, uh, while uh, I introduce it, please go to menti.com, uh, use the code there at the top of the screen 
to log in. And the question we are asking you is, have you or your business clients, if you're not a business yourself, have you made progress towards the following goals over the last three years? And there are three goals that we are asking about here. The first is about uh, awareness and understanding of what natural capital is. The second is about carrying out and completing a natural capital assessment. And the third is about, once you've completed a natural capital assessment, is natural capital now influencing the decisions that your business or your business clients are making? Is it influencing their business strategy, business models, business activities? And you can use a sliding scale for each of those three goals from no progress to we've achieved this goal. So please uh, complete that. I see we've got quite a number of you already completing this uh, mentee. We'll give that another 20 seconds or so. And what we can see uh, coming through um, is an interesting pattern. We've got um, a fairly good progress towards understanding of natural capital, a full understanding of natural capital. We've got rather less in terms of having completed a natural capital assessment. And interestingly, slightly more um, on natural capital influencing business. So that would suggest that natural capital influencing business is not always dependent upon having completed a natural capital assessment. Would, uh, would any of the Weaver Nature team like to come in on this and make uh, any brief comments on what we're seeing here? And we'll, we'll, we'll take that as it, as it stands. Um, so we've, we've got that uh, result. Thanks very much for that. And uh, that's very helpful. We'll move on then to um, uh, a presentation now from, or uh, a presentation from Mark Goff, who is the Chief Executive of the Capitalist Coalition. And uh, Mark's gonna give us an overview of uh, state of play, how have things changed over the last two to three years over the period of the We Value Nature campaign? Um, and um, how is that affecting the way we need to go about accelerating the transition? Mark, over to you. Thank you, Guy, and welcome, everyone. Um, I'm actually going to go back a little bit further than two to three years to be able to provide a little bit more context. Um, I'm not going to do any slides. I'm just going to have a bit of a conversation here. But uh, there's lots of slides and lots of materials, as Guy has been saying, that We Value Nature has produced that we can um, draw down upon. Um, the first thing I want to do is actually go to one of the founders of the present movement that we're in at the moment, Richard Spencer, who's also um, one of the people leading this project, because he was there at that first meetings that were being held um, and actually um, started up a lot of this present um, activity. So Richard, maybe you can just tell us just very briefly what it was actually crystallized at that beginning, the purpose that people came behind. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, Guy, I'm sorry I didn't comment earlier. I was struggling to, to take myself off mute. It's, uh, I, thought, I thought that first slide was very interesting and very refreshing was to see how, how people are really getting their arms around natural capital and you know that it, it, it's meaningful. I think it's not not so surprising that it's it's not in, it, it's influencing business decisions more that without necessarily doing a natural capital assessment, because in a sense it's it you you're going to have a lot of those very high level decisions. We know what this is. It needs to influence the business, and and actually the action that comes out of that might be the natural capital assessment. So, um, sorry that was just so that you didn't think we were all just refusing to comment at the beginning. Um, but um, yeah, so um, th this 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 really this this whole thing came was 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 sparked was catalyzed by a project which was known as the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity. Not a very catchy name, but it was run um, out of the United Nations what was then Environment Program, and led by. Um, one of the godfathers really of, of all of this, Pavan Sukhdev. Um, and they, they, the, the idea was essentially that nature was, 
was economically invisible and how do we give it visibility and one of the work streams in all of that was what was was really business what does it mean for business so we got in about 2011 to the end of the of the what was called the TEAB project and I remember a few of us and in fact the the core of the people who really some of the organizations you see here today WBCSD, IUCN and ICAEW were saying well we don't want this to be a report that just sits on a shelf and everyone goes that's interesting we we came together and we said how do we turn this into action and take that business work stream and say how do businesses embed nature in their decision making we know we know we get this at a high level we know that it can't be economically invisible most people fear but in how do we help businesses in their day jobs they sit down at their desk on monday morning and think i want to embed nature in my decision making how do you do that and that was really the call that brought our three organizations and a wider group around us together to found what was then called the Tea for Business Coalition, even more catchy. And, and then as the language of capitals came in, became the Natural Capital Coalition. Is that what you're looking for, Mark? Exactly, Richard, because I wanted just to take us back a little bit further because things have changed massively in the last. Um, I remember going to Hong Kong when we launched the finance sector supplement work um, and we uh, HSBC gave us their big building in Hong Kong, 2000 seater. We had 30 people turn up to it, and that was in 2017, 2018. Um, if you look at the number of people that have been involved in this campaign now, if you look at the amount of people that this campaign has brought into this space, it really has changed. The coalition was set up by those organizations at the beginning, the Capitals Coalition as it is now, was set up as this space, as Richard is saying, to be a, a fulcrum, a space between all of these activities to help to advance it, to get it to a mainstream, to my to standardize those processes. And I think we've seen lots of opportunities where that has actually occurred. Instead of the a few organizations that were there at the beginning, I think it was six or seven, it got up to 40 when we started harmonizing that work into the natural capital protocol. Um, we're now at 400, so 10 times that number at the center and 20,000 plus, there's 23,000 actually, around the world that are engaging or doing something every year around this topic that we're actually talking to. 25% of the FTSE 100 I'm sorry, not FTSE 100, FTSE 100 is actually a bit higher than that. The Global 500 from S&P, 25% of them have actually been engaging on this topic of valuation of natural capital in this last calendar year. These sort of things are things that if you'd have asked me five or six years ago, I would have said would not be possible. We all came into this because we knew it was the right thing to be doing. But, uh, and obviously we hoped that we would be able to mainstream it, but it really does feel like we're getting towards an inflection point. This last year, we've had the Dasgupta review, which set out the economic imperative coming from the, um, the UK Treasury. We've had high level statements coming from the G7 and setting up from that the Impact Task Force, which will be launching its work on next Monday, in fact, um, and it will be looking to try and influence some of the economic agenda. We've had the launch of the UNCEA, the System of Environmental Economic Accounts as a standard that we've now got statistical departments all around the world starting to apply this. We've got um, at COP26 for the first time, um, when we went into those conversations, um, we were talking before I'm part of that global positive um, idea. Um, we were, so we should be having an equitable, nature positive and climate neutral future. We've got to link those three things together. This year at COP, we thought maybe 15, 20% of the nationally determined contributions would come back with nature, and that would be a good step forward. It was over 90%, 92% of those nationally determined contributions contained nature, and particularly that economic element of it. Business for Nature was also set up alongside the We Value Nature here. Business for Nature, we've set that up with, with various other partners who have been part of that. And, and in that, we've now got over a thousand businesses in the central pillar of what they're asking governments from a business perspective. And if you saw one of the articles in the newspapers about a month ago, um, there was lots of people from the con conservation community saying, this is amazing. Business is really now stepping forward and actually asking for change. It's asking for things to occur. And Business for Nature has been a key part of that. That's taking valuation as its central pillar. It's got five asks. Its central one is on this valuation thing that we value nature has been progressing. 
So all of those things are really quite significant and it does feel like we're a bit of an inflection point. If you go back, back again to this 2000, um, it felt like there was a bit of an inflection point then. It then found in 2015 with a nat which is the basis for a lot of these things that you're seeing now. That was the harmonization of those 40 different approaches. I can see several people on the call here that were involved in that. That brought together all of those that were applying this within the business world. Um, that's now been a platform that the things such as the Impact Weighted Accounts Initiative from Harvard, the Value Balancing Alliance from Germany, the Rethinking Capital, which is normative accounting, all of these other things that are coming out of it have all come out of that work that a lot of the people on the call here today were involved in creating. But that inflection point we had again in 2015 was really important. But what we've now seen is this blossoming. We've seen, as you do, whenever you put down a new baseline, you put down a new baseline of connections and really trying to connect things up. We had the Paris Agreement then. We also had all of these things that were going on uh, with international leadership. We have felt like we had that then. We kind of lost that for a little while. Um, when you have that, it then blossoms out again. We've seen this now. It's starting to curve. And that curve, what we've been doing through We Value Nature has been essential to that. It's been accelerating the amount of uptake, but also starting to make sure that there is consistency. There's actually a way that we can do this in a consistent way. There's lots of other things that have been going alongside this campaign that have been supporting it. So we've had this um, standardization of natural capital accounting, which is going on at the moment, another EU funded project, which has got transparent, which is one bit you may be aware of. There's a consultation out for the moment. If you haven't looked at that, please do so. Um, what that's trying to do is taking steps five, six and seven of the protocol. So the measure and that standardize some of those pieces. Say, what is the minimum requirement you really must consider? Um, how do you do that in a consistent way? Biodiversity was a really difficult part of that. So a line has been set up as a separate project, which is bringing together, there's now over 21 different metrics that have been developed in the last few years um, on biodiversity. It's bringing all of those people that have been involved in those metrics on biodiversity, bringing all of that together. So a transparent and aligned, these two EU projects are coming together to make sure there's standardization in that. So we're moving, as you've probably heard me say before, from the language that was there in the protocols previously from a could, from could, what we could do, to what we should do. And that's where we are getting into now. There's boundaries around it. What should we be doing? And we're moving towards, we think by the end of this decade, towards a must. And We Value Nature is a big part of trying to build that up. There's other things as well. We've obviously united now. We're not the natural capital coalition. We're the social and human capital coalitions joined as well. So the capitals, so looking across all of that. We Value Nature was launched when we were still looking at the natural capital. But even so, even through the We Value Nature work, there's been a real recognition of the importance of making sure we understand all of the capitals. We've done plenty of studies now showing that a financial capital study is just as bad as a natural capital study by itself or a social and human capital study by itself, because you're only looking at one capital. You're not identifying the way that these things interconnect. And that's really important. We need to do a lot more work to build up the other capitals because natural capital is more advanced, I think, in the way that's being thought about. Um, alongside those standardizations, so there is some work on living wage and other things that are coming through. And I think we will see over this next period of time, all of this coming together. And I guess that's, that's part of what happens next is that we've been trying to look at how we can change those accounting rules, change the math of all of this. The conversation has increased. The amount of people that have come in through We Value Nature need the challenge days, the 10 challenge days, um, through some of those other activities, through the training. Um, one of the things that a couple of our team are doing today is actually taking some of that now and building a Coursera course, an online course, to help people to fill the skills and knowledge gap that we're very aware is there. We've got lots of businesses, particularly through the pandemic, have come through to the community and said they want to do more, they want to understand this better. Well, they can't do that unless there's environmental economists, unless there's people that understand really how to make value. So this is a great opportunity for um, lots of people to get better jobs. We've seen a massive movement in the market. We've got lots of jobs on the community sites at the moment, on the Capitals Coalition community site, where people are looking to move. Um, I've actually helped a couple of people with references even just in this last week. So there's a lot of movement in this where if you're understanding this, there's an opportunity for you here as well. The next bit as well, I think we're moving into is changing the rules. So the incentive mechanisms, as we move from this could to the should to the must, 
we need to understand some of those incentive mechanisms, some of those ways that these rules are placed. We need to create that enabling environment. Around that, one of the things that the community has been involved with more recently is setting up an accountability accelerator. So if you go back to that problem we've got with the biodiversity metrics, it wasn't so much the individual organizations that were coming up with them, it was the funding stream that formed that. Funders decided that biodiversity finally was an important issue. After us knocking on the door for years and saying, biodiversity is key, they finally picked it up. That was great. What they then did was they funded 19 consecutive projects to come up with competitive metrics and ways of measuring it. We didn't need 19, we needed a toolbox, we need to understand how it works, but all of those organizations were connected through the Capitals Coalition, through We Value Nature, through all of these things. So what we're now having to do is spend more money and take more time through the Align project to bring them back together. Wouldn't it have been more sensible if we could have actually sat down at the beginning, got all of those people into the room and actually come up with the metrics that we needed together rather than competing against them. This is what the Accountability Accelerator is going to do. We've got over 50 foundations that are coming together. We've just hired an executive director, and that's going to take some of these things that we've been doing through We Value Nature and look at how can we make this now accountable in this next stage, moving through that could, should, must again. How do we make sure that people know when it's been held accountable? And this is something that's not a them and us. It's got to be a system of accountability is going to be key. Uh, there's another project as well, so there's one more thing I want to jump back to as well. The nature-based solutions work that's come out through IUCN has been imperative here as well. The standards that they're coming up with, you can see how if you're going to do a natural capital assessment, you then also need to be able to then apply that. You apply that through those nature-based solutions, and that's advanced massively as well, and is part of this We Value Nature project, looking at those nature-based solutions as well. Just to sort of round this off then, the rules is going to be important some of the uh, thinking about those incentives. There's also going to be this accountability system. We're looking to integrate the protocols. There's gonna be a navigation tool that we're um, pulling together now as well. We're setting up value labs to build on the work that's come through from We Value Nature when this closes, to be able to take that in, to look at catalysts. We're identifying people now that can take this out more widely. Um, we'll also, we're um, at the moment putting together a proposal for another EU project that will link up some of the work going on in public, private, the footprinting work that's been going on, We Value Nature, the Maya project, which you may be aware of in the public sector as well, trying to connect all of these up. And this next phase has got to be about acceleration. We've got this here. We Value Nature has given a really brilliant platform, brought lots of new people into the process, has developed tools and resources, which we'll hear a bit more about from James in a minute, that can be used. And the journey steps are really essential. And we're going to be using that throughout the community in so many different ways, along with some of the other tools that are here. But what we've now got to move into is actually getting this applied. We've got to start looking at how we can catalyze, how we can instigate and get people to apply this. We've got the frameworks that are set out there internationally. We've got countries starting to do this at a national level. We've got the statements, we've got the commitments from G7. We've got the tools and resources to be able to do this now. Now what we've got to do is we've got to move into actual application of this and make sure that by 2030, the majority of decisions by business, finance and government actually include all of the capitals and therefore the decisions are going to help us provide a more fair, just and sustainable world. There we go, Guy. There's a little bit of a background. Many, many thanks, uh, Mark, for that whistle-stop tour of what's happened over the last few years. And it is, uh, it is encouraging to see how far things have moved. Um, I mean, you did start out uh, with Richard and, and, and Teeb, and uh, it takes me right back. I was uh, at the commission in 2006, uh, actually helping to commission Teeb. So it's, uh, it's, that's quite a while ago. That's 15 years ago. But uh, so it's taken a while, but we are getting there. And uh, you've laid out a little bit where we need to get to uh, by 2030. Um, so thanks very much. That's, that's provided a very nice um, uh, sounding board for the rest of today's dialogue. Uh, James, I'm now going to hand over to you um, to provide us a little bit of an overview of the kinds of resources that We Value Nature has developed to help this acceleration of the transition to nature positive. So, uh, James, over to you. Thanks, Guy. Um, let me just share my screen. Um, so, hi, everybody. I'm James from Opla. Um, 
one of our key roles in Rebuy Your Nature has been sharing and promoting the resources and the content the campaigns produced. So uh, that's what I'm going to quickly share now. But before that, um, as we reach the end of the campaign, we, we've been reviewing and looking at the impact we've had. So on screen are some of the quantitative statistics we pulled out, which, um, which we've been looking at. I think some of those are really powerful and impressive. Um, you know, the amount of downloads we've had of all the infographics and the resources that we're, we're looking at and, um, that, you know, and the potential impact they could have had. So that's another thing that we've been looking at when we look at these quantitative statistics, you know, the, the, the story behind those numbers. So we know if one of the training resources or one of those downloaded infographics can reach the right person, maybe change the way they think about nature, the impact down the line that could have is massive. So we're, look, we're, we're reviewing these quantitative statistics, but as a group, we're also you know, working to identify some of the, the stories behind those numbers. Okay, so I wanted to show, show this slide before we get into the resources, because it's sort of really central to our approach to developing and, and sharing our, our resources and training materials. Essentially, um, the license we, we chose, uh, this Creative Commons license, means that you're free to share and adapt the We Value Nature materials that provided you with credit. Um, so you, you can adapt them for commercial use if, 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 if you want, you can rework them, you can repackage them. And our goal with choosing this sort of really open license was for the materials to be used and reused and, and outlast the project and, and hopefully uh, continue to be used, adapted and, you know, um, used for years to come. So our training resources, um, there's, there's so much valuable information in each, each, each training module. I think we've got a couple of modules and a couple um, bespoke to the food and beverage sector. So really what I'd quickly say on the training resources is, is go in there and explore, explore what, what's in there. You know, we've got up to full day trainings, but, but also short activities you can do. Um, and, and, and yeah, like a, a wealth of information, like, as I said before, you, you, can, you can use and adapt. So we've also got our media library, which, which houses all our infographics, images, videos, all, all the, the, the training resources previously mentioned also on our media library. Um, the thing I wanted to highlight about this was um, it, the, there's an auto accreditation feature. So on each media item page, you'll, you'll find a recommended credit you can use. So, uh, for example, if you find an infographic and, and you, you want to include it in a, a report, you'll know exactly what permission you have um, and you'll have a, a copy and pasteable credit that you can you can you can use underneath underneath that infographic so it makes sharing and reusing the content super easy and, and you don't have to uh, do all the copyright research yourself so our natural capital stories which are essentially our, our case studies um, We've got some written case studies, but what I wanted to highlight here is the image on the left, which is our recently added uh, testimonial videos where we interviewed sort of people from five different businesses to get the, the real stories behind their value and nature journeys. So uh, these people were sort of individuals within companies who were driving change and, and we sort of tried to get them to open up about you know, the barriers they faced. Uh, how they found it, how long it took, what, what resources and tools they use, and also what recommendations they'd have for other people. So I think, you know, I think those videos are really insightful. And, and we've also got a few more videos on the way before the campaign ends. So the Natural Capital Journey is our interactive web tool that um, is, uh, is quite cool and impressive. So I recommend you check it out at that journey.revalunature.eu. And um, it sort of, it showcases the story of We Value Nature and, and the theory behind We Value Nature. So you're asked to place yourself on your natural capital journey, whether you're starting at the bottom of the mountain or, or maybe near the summit. And then the tool presents likely obstacles or barriers that, that based on our research, you're likely to face and then provides resources that you, you can go and explore um, that, that, that we think will help you overcome those obstacles. Um, we're including We Value Nature resources, but, but also, you know, resources from any other organization that, that we think would be useful and relevant to, 
and and our aim with this our aim with this tool is to also sort of continually update it. So if we see a, a new useful resource, then 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 we'll add that to uh, the corresponding barriers. So Mark mentioned this and um, mentioned that there's some some recording going on today for this, which is uh, the We Are in Nature and uh, Capitals Coalition coming together to develop a, a free online training course focused on valuing nature and people. Uh, this course is built, going to be built within Coursera and it's going to be self-paced and interactive. It's going to feature videos, uh, interactive exercises, quizzes, discussion prompts. Um, and I think there's going to be several modules. You, 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 know, you can choose the most relevant module and, and choose to go at, it, at your own pace. Um, and we're, yeah, we're really excited for this. We've got some uh, some high level business speakers contributing as well. So you'll get you'll, you'll get a business view as well. Um, it's launching in early 2022, but but you can register your interest now. Um, I'll pop the link in the chat in a minute. Um, and that 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 will just make me you'll get um, sort of email updates on, on when it's ready and also uh, potentially an invitation to become a, a beta tester where you can you can you can explore an early version. We'd ask that you provide feedback. So I think that's um, that's the uh, that they're the key resources I wanted to share. Sorry, I've gone to slide too far. They're the key resources I wanted to share anyway. So I hope that that overview was useful and it's quite brief and, and there's, there's there's a lot there. And yeah, I really just recommend you visit the website and visit the corresponding links. Explore what you think is interested. And as mentioned at the start, remember that the We Value Nature content is open and that we want you to share and use it and, and adapt it however, however you wish. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, James, for giving that uh, quick overview of all of our resources. And um, uh, we uh, hope you uh, will all uh, take your time to explore uh, all the richer content that is available there to help you with your work with businesses. So we'll we'll move on now. We and uh, we've now got a couple of uh, guest speakers uh, who very kindly uh, joined us to, today. Um, so I'll hand over um, first to uh, Angelina Kwakenen from the Finnish uh, partner of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Uh, Angelina, thank you very much for joining, and over to you. Great, thank you. I'll follow in in Mark's steps with having no slides uh, and just speak you through my, my short presentation. Uh, so, hey everybody, and thank you for invitation to share our experiences on working with companies on their natural capital journeys. Uh, as Guy mentioned, my name is Angelina Kwakkonen and I work as a sustainability specialist at FIBS. And if you do not know what FIBS is, we are a Finnish CSR network, uh, the largest one in the Nordics. And we have over 380 organizations as our members. A majority of our members are large companies, but we also have NGOs and higher education institutions and public sector players as, a, as our members as well. And um, we have been supporting businesses with their natural capital journeys since 2014, so for quite a while already. And today I was asked to share some of the insights from the work that we have done so far. So just uh, as a short background, back in 2014, together with the Ministry of the Environment and Finnish Environment Institute, we identified that the key challenge at that point, and some might say uh, today still, uh, the key challenge for businesses, uh, natural capital work, was the lack of awareness and know-how on biodiversity and natural capital in general. And so, uh, for that reason, we decided to proceed by organizing a year-long masterclass on natural capital, where the focus was on understanding the interdependencies between business and natural capital, that is recognizing valuing and measuring impacts and dependencies, as well as increasing the knowledge on the practices to mitigate and manage the impacts. So we had a uh, four to five sessions in a year, and they were accompanied by field trips and company visits, as well as larger seminars. And I think Mark was a keynote speaker at one of them. Um, but today I'll be focusing on the trainings. Um, 
we are discussing today the, the different resources. And at the point that we started our work, uh, there were limited resources available, but still enough for us to go forward. So we utilized different materials such as WC, uh, WBCSD's business ecosystem training materials, and then corporate ecosystem service review, as well as natural capital protocol when it was published. And we trained around 10 companies per year. And by 2018, you had over 50 organizations trained, which uh, we considered to be a great success. And at that point, we decided to update the training and open up the session so that also previous participants had an opportunity to join and update their knowledge. Um, we also had sessions together with Natural Capital Coalition and We Value Nature. Um, opening up that training uh, increased the number of participants, but in my personal opinion, it also slightly decreased the amount of engagement. So currently we are working on creating a training format of something in between a very intensive masterclass and separate sessions. Um, on, on how this has been, uh, whether it has been a success, um, last year a report was published reviewing the previous Finnish biodiversity strategy. And as in many countries, it showed that much more needed to be done to achieve the goal of halting biodiversity loss. But it did, however, highlight the extensive work we had done with companies. So all in all, we consider our masterclass to be a success. And as the discussion around natural uh, nature loss has increased, uh, we wanted to see whether it has also been reflected uh, to the natural capital work in companies. So in the beginning of this year, we conducted a survey on the state of natural capital work in companies and also uh, had some questions regarding climate change as well. And it showed that despite there being a clear forerunners as well as increase in awareness, there is still lack of understanding how biodiversity loss affects businesses. Uh, for me, the most concerning result was that almost half of the respondents considered that biodiversity loss will not affect their business in the upcoming 10 years, if at all, which uh, is completely not in line with, um, uh, with the risk reports of World Economic Forum. And in general, considering how pandemic, this pandemic has been linked to nature loss, I don't think there are many companies that haven't been affected. So perhaps not not uh, direct uh, impacts, but at least indirect. And perhaps due to this, there, these results also showed that it's uh, quite challenging for companies to understand the financial implications and benefits of the natural capital work. And for majority, uh, the work is strongly related to uh, reputational aspects only. But on the positive side, um, half of the participants also said that, uh, that biodiversity is included in their sustainability st strategies, and it is also considered in their environmental impact assessment. So it's a, it's a plus uh, for, for us. Uh, and what we also see is that the sustainability agendas of businesses are dominated by climate change. Um, we also conduct an uh, annual sustainability in Finland study. And just last week, we have published results of the study this year, and it showed that 66% of the companies consider climate change as a very significant priority in their sustainability work next year, while uh, only 13% said this about the biodiversity. So if I had slides, I would show you the slide where climate change is on the very top of the list and biodiversity is uh, on the very bottom. There has been some changes from the uh, survey uh, in the previous year. So uh, there has been some increase in how many companies value biodiversity higher than previously, but it's not as significant as you would hope. So it might appear that not much development can be seen, but from our side, we see a significant change. Um, when we launched our natural capital training, we had uh, to do some hauling around and persuading uh, some companies to join the program at all. And at this point, uh, the situation is that we often receive inquiries about the next sessions and opportunities to engage on the topic. So there has been clear change in the 
in the interest from the side of the companies. And also the contents of, um, of the work that we do have, has changed based on the uh, needs of the companies. Uh, because while previously we focused on the maybe so-called basics of natural capital and ecosystem services, now more and more discussions are revolving around the practical work. So the data needed and the engagement with value change as well as disclosure. An increasing amount of companies are looking now for the right tools and methods to increase their impact on their uh, natural capital work. And so what we see is kind of a second wave of companies becoming aware of their relation uh, to natural capital. So in the future, we'll also aim to uh, supporting the forerunners as well as making sure that those who are just starting their work get the support to go forward. So it's very great to see that uh, many new resources are being made available because the more companies are interested, the more we need uh, different types of materials to support their work. Uh, we, we have many different uh, smaller insights to share. And if I had more time, I would go deeper into, into those, but at this point I'll, I'll end and maybe in the Q and A, we can go deeper in some of these. Very many thanks for that, Angelina. Very, very interesting. And um, interesting to, to hear that um, there's, there's still uh, uh, biodiversity is still not featuring very high on the priority list for, for a lot of companies, so clearly still quite a way to go, but also interesting to hear that there, you know, some companies, the front runners, are, are now moving on to some of the more the, the nitty gritty, the detail of, of, of what they need to, to really get this embedded in their, in their strategies and, and, and activities. Thanks so much, and um, please do uh, put in questions in the chat. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, take some questions at the end after our second speaker. Um, so we'll move on now to Jan Verstraten. Jan is joining us from uh, ICF, uh, one of the uh, support team uh, for the EU Business and Biodiversity Platform. So uh, Jan, over to you. Thank you, Guy. Um, can you hear me well? Yes. So I said I um, would uh, not use slide this morning, but I eventually had uh, sometime um, before bringing the kids to, to school to, to develop some, some uh, slides. Um, and um, so I was, um, I mean, thank you. First of all, thank you, Guy, for this invitation. I think this is, for, for me and for us as a team, a key opportunity to, to also discuss challenges that we are facing um, since we are in this uh, movement together and facing similar challenges. Uh, it also coincides with the end of the year period where we kind of take stock um with with the team and and start planning the, the year um ahead um i must say um and the presentation that i'm that i'm showing today is a bit of is, is just shown under the caveat that this is only coming from my end since it we just um um you know got out of the ubns ebns um you know a period so um i haven't had the time yet to to kind of um um, discuss that with the team. Um, but um, so I was, so I'm, I'm Jan Verstraten, and I'm, I'm representing ICF, but especially uh, the European Business and Biodiversity Platform that we've been helping coordinate over the last um, three phases. And that means six or seven years since I actually joined um, the company. Uh, and I was asked, Guy, to um, provide um, an overview of the actions and resources that we have taken as a platform to make value, uh, valuing nature the new norm in business. Um, and let me start um, with um, just reiterating, reiterating uh, um, you know, the or mission, which is to reverse nature loss by supporting businesses throughout the diversity and natural capital journey. And um, also, you know, to, to illustrate the work we, and describe the work we are doing as a platform, we like to use this conceptual framework that kind of echoes what uh, Mark has been saying uh, at the start of this discussion. Uh, this is really, uh, you might actually have seen that before, it's inspired from the transition management theories. 
and um, describes the various phases that um, we need to bring marketplace from inception to uh, institutionalization of uh, natural capital but biodiversity in, in uh, business decision making. Um, and as you can see in this graphic, um, the first um, phase, um, the, so the inception phase, in this phase, the platform has helped the market uh, to move from, from uh, inception to first movers. Um, um, you know, by uh, trying to, and I think this, this uh, there's a crucial element here to foster dialogue between businesses that are creating these innovate innovations, uh, that are establishing initial common grounds between them and the policymakers who are in charge of um, creating this enabling environment and making sure this dialogue is, is well established um, so that we can swiftly move and take, you know, take, um, you know, build on on what uh, the, the private sector has been has been doing. Um, so as you can see, um, um, we are moving uh, and and looking back at the last five, six, seven years uh, of of the platform. We've been moving from this initial inception to perhaps um, a critical mass. Um, and, and so we really see this, this acceleration um, and this uptake from, from, um, of biodiversity within, within business, that's, that's clear. Uh, we've supported and are supporting the standardization of uh, biodiversity accounting uh, through uh, projects uh, such as Align. We continue to showcase successful business uh, cases uh, and engage with first movers to inspire this critical mass um, and of course, we also support the development of this ambition post 2020 biodiversity framework that is key also to, to, to create that vision um, for, bis for, for businesses. Um, so this, this mission translates into three different work streams um, with uh, functional objectives. So this is not new to most of you, I suppose. Um, so we are working with um, I mean, through the work stream methods, uh, supporting the convergence of methodologies uh, towards a certain level of standardization um, of biodiversity and natural capital accounting in line with accounting principles. We've been and are working with pioneers, especially with the financial sector, through community of practices. Um, and if, lastly, um, we've um, um, also focusing on uh, mainstreaming biodiversity across the critical mass and that means especially working with SMEs which uh, as you know are the backbone uh, of the economy and are uh, sometimes uh, you know less capable of, of, um, of focusing on that um, challenge um, themselves. Um, and just taking stock of what we've done this um, year um, and so 2021 um, well, actually, many things, great individual collective achievements. Uh, you know, you, you certainly heard about the, the series of, of maybe attended the series on biodiversity data for businesses, um, uh, you know, for webinars, 500 participants, uh, and, uh, and an upcoming uh, report uh, to be published um, in early 2022. Um, also, this comes with an update of the navigation tool. Um, through the work stream pioneers with we have engaged uh, through our community of practices uh, community of practice with the financial sector um, and through um, um, you know trying to focus on focus on on specific topics how to engage governments how to um, engage uh, corporate bor borrowers um, um, so influencing the declines of these uh, financial institutions, but also how to measure biodiversity uh, in this uh, sector. And um, in, in the last, uh, and of course, yes, the, there's here strong links uh, with the Finance for Biodiversity Pledge. You might have seen um, the new signatories, um, um, yeah, increasing the, the numbers, I think, to more than 80 signatories um, in, in just 
two two years. So that's also a great achievement and a testimony of the of the great uptake of biodiversity in this in this sector. And um, in relation to the work stream mainstreaming, uh, I think the the the, the the highlight for this year is the publication of the um, um, SME guide um, um, that is yeah soon to be published uh, also in early 2022, um, which is also the 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 what will be the um, outcome of also a good you know collaboration with uh, many of the networks that are here in, in this call. Um, we built, I think, important to mention is that we built on the platform unique selling points to, to, to complement, strengthen the partnership with other networks. Uh, we have this key um, advant advantage of linking with uh, European Commission uh, policymakers, um, which is seen as a, um, you know, great asset for, for businesses to also learn, learn what you know the commission is is, is doing uh, preparing in terms of legislation but also to influence to some extent upcoming uh, frameworks uh, we have this key um the core focus on biodiversity this last um i think this is which one of the distinguishing factors from from other platforms such as the capsus coalition for example uh, but also the objectivity and neutrality um which characterizes the, the platform as being a kind of a, a, a space where we can neutrally um, take, like assess, collect and assess, um, for example, uh, methodologies to um, uh, measure impacts and dependencies on, on, on biodiversity. A flagship initiative of the platform is certainly the European Business and Nature Summit. Um, again, uh, we see um, a great, um, I think an illustration of again that uh, transition curve moving slightly to the critical mass, um, as you know, the, the numbers attendees have been uh, have, have increased over the last years. Uh, and uh, remember, this used to be the, the the platform's annual conference is now turning into something European wide with um, with um, you know the lots of um, partners that you can see here on the slide helping and uh, supporting this um, this event we also see in communication that uh, we're not this is not only about attendees but also beyond that uh, you know people are talking about biodiversity and nature um, in general on social media um, you know this reach uh, almost 4 million accounts reached by the, the, the Business Nature Summit campaign in just two weeks, um, meaning people actually reading, uh, reading um, uh, maybe just passively, but still uh, that's, that's nonetheless an extremely good uh, result. Um, some takeaways um, to end uh, uh, with. Um, so we, we clearly see um, compared to previous editions that there is a growing number of businesses engaging on, on biodiversity and, and having really interesting examples uh, and business cases to share. So this is really um, encouraging for, for us. Um, there's also, and this is I think also a testimony of the growing recognition of the urgency to act, act. probably also the growing awareness that um, businesses need to take that seriously and a signal that uh, real, real action is, is happening. Um, it shows that after COP26, nature is really catching up on the climate agenda. Just re rephrasing what, uh, what speakers have, have been stressing during this summit and, and perceived by business as a twin crisis that need to be addressed jointly. Um, and again, I'm quoting here some, some speakers and, and um, Speakers seem to highlight that we are approaching a tipping point. Everything is, is accelerating. We see many developments uh, on the policy side, but also pledges and commits be, being taken by, by businesses themselves. Uh, you know, we've, we've mentioned business, um, the, the financial biodiversity pledge. Uh, we've had this um, a European business statement uh, published during the summit. Uh, we've seen the Act for Nature framework mushrooming also beyond France and there is a strong call to 
to make that uh, European wide also. I think the 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 the, the but there is but uh, to to the you know the, the positive uh, signals that we are observing, and these are that there is still a perceived complexity um, to, to apprehend and understand biodiversity as a business. Maybe some competing challenges also at play. Uh, for example, when it comes to the use of of land uh, for renewable energy uh, versus biodiversity con conservation. And this was um, a topic of one of the sessions um, with um, um, uh, energy uh, represent um, energy like uh, energy representatives uh, such as uh, Total Energy or uh, Angie. There is a clear need for more regulation, um, as it is still cheaper to destroy nature than to protect it, and um, this regulation really needs to make this more accountable vis-a-vis -vis the, the actions or pledges and guide uh, consumer choices. There's also a need for more credible standards to guide business decision making and um, the lack of global biodiversity targets um, or framework is perceived by business as a barrier to, to move um, uh, forward. Uh, so this is hopefully something that um, we, um, you know, can, um, can go beyond uh, in, in, in 2020 and see, see um, that, um, that happening. Um, um, and I think just to, to end with, this is um, the visual that um, we, that our uh, illustrator has been uh, developing in the last uh, closing plenary, which again, I think depicts the, the, the idea of this transition curve, you know, this, um, there are many, and also the, 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 the idea that there are many, um, um, you know, drivers uh, and, and, and elements that are um, um, uh, making um, that uh, transition possible. Um, legis legislation is one, um, but also um, the, the division and the global diversity framework that uh, we, we need uh, to um, um, you know, guide uh, business actions and, and uh, enable them to make, um, to take like uh, action uh, and, and, and set um, targets that um, translate um, um, global, uh, global uh, frameworks at, at local level or company level. Um, uh, yes, and I think the, the, there is, of course, um, we need to speed up, uh, we need to scale up action for nature. Uh, there is a strong call uh, to all businesses to, to, to um, you know, join uh, this, this movement and strengthen that uh, business for biodiversity movement uh, and, and, and make that systemic change um, um, reality. Um, I think that the, one of the key takeaways also is that we really need to make business accountable, um, accountable for, for their action. Um, uh, this will only be, I think, possible if we have the, the, the regulation following. Uh, and and um, I'm personally um, positive. Um, uh, I see um, you know, many uh, positive signals. And um, you know, looking back at, at this five, six years where I've been uh, working uh, closely with with the with the platform closely with businesses uh, through this platform um i i feel uh, even if it's quite slow i feel um, a change is is happening uh, but yeah the journey is i mean we are not yet there and um so still a long way to go uh, of course um so that would be my my uh my perspectives my uh, you know on on uh, what the platform has been doing and then what still needs to be done. Um, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions and then reflect. Um, but again, thanks, Guy, and uh, looking forward to the, to the follow-up uh, discussion. All right, very many thanks for that, Jan, for, for providing us that overview of what the platform has been up to over the last few years and uh, all the um, output that has been producing. Um, 
We um, are running a little bit behind. I'll take just a, a couple of questions. If anyone wants to raise a hand, um, I'll, I'll look out for you in the in the uh, chat and the participants lists. Um, I have a, a question that's come in, um, which I think I could address to both of you in terms of what do we know about how far we've got to critical mass? And maybe I could ask that of Angelina at the national level in Finland. Um, do you have a handle on whether you're how far you're getting towards critical mass um, of companies um, engaging and uh, taking account of nature in their decisions. Um, and uh, the same question really to Jan at the European scale. Do, do you have a feel, Mark mentioned in his presentation, uh, around 25% of the S&P Global 500 already engaging in some way um, at the global scale. Um, so what's that looking like in, in, in Finland, um, Angelina? Just a second for me. Yeah, I think you can hear me now. Yeah. Um, I do think there is still some way to go to reach the a full critical mass. We've reached many, many companies and much work has been done um, in terms of kind of uh, creating the basic understanding of uh, how biodiversity loss affects businesses but but I think um, we're currently at the tipping point so I wouldn't say that we have yet reached the critical mass and I think um, in the future there needs to be now that we've reached the kind of the baseline of uh, enough companies understanding uh, the uh, the dependencies of natural capital um, the next step is to focus on, on different sectors. So far, we've been uh, focusing on, on companies in general. Many thanks, uh, Angelina. And, and uh, Jan, at EU level, do you have a handle on that? Yeah, well, the first, I think the first question is, is what is what is the critical mass? Uh, there are various theories uh, saying we should, um, and as, as soon as you get 3% of the economy, um, you know, integrating, for example, biodiversity in their decision-making, uh, and, and so then, you know, the, you reach that uh, social thr uh, thresh threshold in which, um, you know, the, the rest of the economy is, is following. Uh, you know, it can also be 8, 8%, 12%. So this really depends on, on uh, first the theory you are starting from. Um, and then, well, I think we can, we can feel uh, having reached that uh, threshold in certain sectors, and I'm specifically looking at the financial sector where uh, I think the, the, the financial policy pledge is a testimony, testimony of that. We see a growing number of signatories um, interested in uh, measuring their impacts on uh, you know, biodiversity, pledging, uh, setting targets. Um, on a short-term basis, um, but this is still, uh, I think, an exception, and uh, the whole economy is not yet there at all. Um, and this is also why we've focused, um, you know, part of our work this year on on this SME guide. It's extremely difficult to to to. Um, you know, to, to reach out to, to SMEs. Um, but uh, yes, I think, you know, initiatives like We Valley Nature are essential to, to make that happen. And the training modules that you develop are, you know, crucial. Um, and I think, yes, the regulation. So I think this answers your question, uh, Gerhard, on, on, on the amounts. Uh, now, you know, beyond uh, the numbers, uh, it's of course, um, you know, this enabling environment that we're also looking at uh, with, you know, um, you know the frameworks and, and policy developments happening and, and, and uh, enforcing and, and um, incentivizing businesses to also um, um, uh, change their behaviors. Okay, many, many thanks, Jan. Um, so I think given that we are running a little bit behind time, we, uh, we will move on. Thanks so much to our two speakers, to Angelina and to Jan for joining us this morning and sharing their uh, experience, uh, deep experience in, uh, in uh, helping this uh, transition. 
We'll move on to um, breakout session now, and this is your opportunity to feed in your ex experience. And we're very much looking forward to uh, your uh, uh, sharing that with us. Um, this is how we're going to run it. We're going to split uh, into breakout rooms. We're going to allocate randomly uh, four people per group, and you're going to have uh, 20 minutes to discuss in your group. Um, we um, would like you to allocate uh, one person in your group um, who uh, can record your discussions in a Google Doc, which we are sharing, and you will see the link in the chat there. So please do click on the link to, uh, uh, to get through to the Google Doc. And please, one of you, uh, record um, your discussions, the key points for your discussions in that Google Doc. Um, we will keep you informed of how much time you have left uh, as we go through this. And uh, then we come, when we come back into plenary, um, if your rapporteur could sh kindly share a few key points with us um, so that we uh, get a feel for what's been discussed in the groups. Um, the question, uh, questions that will be discussed, we have a slide on that, uh, James, uh, on the questions. We don't have that slide. The questions are in the Google Doc. They're in the Google Doc, fine. So uh, there are they are questions around um, your experience on uh, what actions and resources have been most effective in addressing uh, uh, business uh, valuing nature, uh, in encouraging businesses to value nature, um, and then uh, around what barriers um, you have um, been able to uh, address and which barriers remain difficult to surmount. So these are the questions that are asked and um, we will now uh, start uh, allocating you to your group. So wishing you a, uh, interesting discussions in your groups. Welcome back everyone. Um, to the plenary. Uh, we hope you had some interesting discussions. I certainly had an interesting discussion in the group I was in. We'll, we'll do some quick feeding back um, now from uh, those uh, breakouts. So um, we'll start uh, with group one, and I believe that was the one I was in. So uh, Saskia, you very kindly made some notes. Do you want to feed back a few key points? I think in general, um, we. Most are exploring for the right information, right? To set this up. If I just not echo, I think right. Um, let me get my notes. So we're different people at different stages. Um, just checking. So the most valuable part we saw so far with resources to we value nature resource library. We work with True Price and Core Tool and we're mapping resources. Uh, the barriers that we addressed for one case was to get funding to get assessments done. And barriers we still have is data, so finding uh, and accessing the right data um, for the especially biodiversity impacts, uh, applying the standards, and also it's time consuming if you do it for the first time as organization, so the right resources should be in place. So these are my notes. If you have any additional input, please let me know. You're on mute. Are you on mute? I'm sorry, I'm on mute. Um, you, did you want to add to what Saskia had uh, said there? I think you're on mute. You can you unmute? Yeah. Sorry, I just uh, want to give her a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. Let's move on to group two. Um, who's going to volunteer to report back on from group two? Me. <laughs> I'm Richard. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, so we had um, we had a really good chat. It was not very long, but but essentially there were four points that came out of us, which is there's a there's a challenge for the interested or the engaged, if you like, which is how 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 we how we translate that, I, I get the arguments, I understand I need to do this, um, but how do I turn it into action, which I suppose is absolutely the, 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 the very heart of what we've been doing in We Value Nature, but a sense that, that that's going to persist. 
as as a challenge and then and then of course the other side which is 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 how do you how do you get how do you reach the 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 unengaged um you know the ones who 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 aren't necessarily just going to be persuaded by by a business case or a market argument um and and the sense that that's still the biggest group um although recognition that um that, that things are moving so it's a case of of moving it along um and we had a, a we talked about the need for for good regulation and and the particular example we, we talked about was was how with um you know disinvestment in in hydrocarbons really is just swapping ownership that until you have a regulatory intervention that prices carbon and makes investing in carbon unattractive you don't have a market disinvestment so this need for a regulatory intervention and and how do you you not make it a compliance exercise you actually feed strategic change um and underpinning all of that was the 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 issue of capacity you know expertise within organizations to do this within policy makers and across the board really um you know that, that that it's wonderful to see how fast the market's moving um and how fast regulation is moving but is there the is there the capacity the expertise to keep up with it excellent thanks ever so much that's certainly at capacity resources time issues certainly come up in our group as well let's move on to group three who is volunteering for that yeah, so I volunteered myself <laughs> as being part of the We Value Nature team. So this is Gerard Boss. And uh, in my group, um, uh, we had uh, Marie uh, Namukosa from uh, GIZ in Uganda. So she brought a perspective from outside the EU, which is great. And Ian Long, who um, uh, is working with PwC, the, the climate and sustainability team. Um, so what, what we were able to discuss in the short time that we had was that um, as GIZ is moving with their natural resources stewardship program into the phase two, they clearly realize the need to now integrate natural capital valuation and accounting as, as, as part of it. Um, and, and, and this is also why uh, Murray was with us is, uh, to learn. Uh, and, uh, as clearly when she looks and talks to business in that region, you know, being Uganda, Zambia, South Africa, and some other countries, it's really a new topic. Um, and it's a, a way of also moving beyond just CSR um, and a way of getting into safeguarding their investment. And what often has been the case is that the water issue or the availability of water was a good entry point uh, for that because it's tangible, it does affect the business directly um, and, and, and has the way uh, to enter into these discussions. Um, for uh, from 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 a PwC standpoint, um, it, he was echoing what what we heard from the other presenters uh, that you know there are a lot of resources out there. Um, it's actually a whole jungle probably of tools, guidelines, and methodologies, uh, but it still needs quite some convergence. And of course, Mark highlighted that there is an effort to get some convergence, but. There is no equivalent to climate scenarios or a GHG protocol that gets recognized by all uh, and, and streamlined. And I would say, I'm adding to it, there's no simple unit of measure or management, you know, in the biodiversity or the natural capital world. So that that makes the uh, um, the, the effort to mainstream a bit more more difficult. When we looked at, you know, what resources uh, you found most effective and useful, I, I tried to point out to the natural capital journey, uh, but that's, you know, perhaps for our audience to explore a bit further, um, because actually that's the effort that we had with We Value Nature was to the uptake pathway and really realizing that the first step in getting into the journey is a difficult one. Um, so, as I said, the barriers that have been able to being addressed is when it's a very tangible and physical um, risk uh, that gets identified, such as water, and that's then a good entry point. Um, it was also highlighted that the primary sector is probably getting it, all the ones that are dependent on raw materials that are linked to nature, you know, they get it. But the question is, how do we get all the others? Um, how do we convince the ones that don't have a direct impact uh, or don't think that they have a direct impact or even an indirect impact on biodiversity? And there is clearly an education gap still out there on, on what the impacts of biodiversity are and what they mean for the other sectors. Um, so, you know, this was in general what, what came out of our discussion, which 
from a we value nature standpoint just confirms the strategy that we had uh, where we are trying to convince the unconverted trying to make it sector specific uh, you know some of our recommendations so that it's more relevant uh, to them and and, and hopefully um, the resources that we've built over time um, uh, will be useful in that respect over to okay. you guys many thanks jared let's go to group four um who's going to report on that Um, I don't think we we decided upon who who is going to present our discussion. We we focused uh, mostly in our discussion uh, around SMEs and the, uh, both the resources that are being developed uh, as well as the challenges uh, around the, the work with with SMEs. Um, I think what has been echoed here already is the the fact that. Um, uh, many SMEs represent the group of not as interested or not as involved as may, maybe bigger companies. There is not uh, such significant push from the stakeholders. Um, and uh, yeah, but we mostly discussed about the resources that the EU platform is now developing. Maybe if Jan wants to add something on that. No, thanks, Angelina. Uh, no, just I was just explaining um, that uh, the SME guide is focusing on uh, that sector that uh, Gerhard just um, referred to has the most direct impact on, on nature, it's the agri-food uh, sector. Uh, and we are, uh, with the help of, uh, you know, many of, of, uh, of the partners here in this call, um, to try to make this this guide as, as hands on as, as possible, um, starting from potential profiles in this value chain uh, and what challenges they are uh, they could be facing in in the real world, uh, and and bring in you know reference to um, useful resources material that are that have that have been developed by by others. Um, so we are not uh, reinventing. Um, you know, um, and, and just reusing things that um, uh, I think we just lost your connection, Jan. Um, um, you know, other initiatives have been have been developed. Uh, being, uh, yeah, I might have. A, thanks, thanks, Jan. Yeah, your Wi-Fi was uh, breaking up. To you, I your Wi-Fi is breaking I, up. I think bit. that's it, uh, guy. Uh, over to you. Thank sorry, you. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for connection. We, we, yeah, we got we got the gist of it. Thanks very much. And and just on that point, uh, I, I'd uh, just highlight that um, one of one of the actions that we've had has recently carried out was a training for the European Enterprise Network, um, um, which, as you may know, is a European Commission supported network for SMEs across Europe. Um, and uh, we did we ran a training for EN focusing on food and beverage sector using our, our uh, training materials um, for that. So that's one network that can certainly be used to get through to large numbers of SMEs. Um, the other route, another route we've also been looking at, of course, is working through the financial institutions. Bank, big banks, of course, support lots of um, farm businesses across Europe. And uh, so training up the banks is, is a good way to get through to their um, farm business clients. I and mean, that's something else we, we've also been working on. Okay, um, James, can I just check how many groups did we have? We've got yeah, we've gone through all the groups. We had, uh, we had the four, I think. Great, thanks very much. Okay, so um, given that, that, thanks ever so much, everyone, for the feedback and, and for the rich discussions and uh, 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 sharing our experience with us. Um, so we'll now um, do a, a, a quick wrap up and uh, Gerard I'd like to hand over to you just to for two or three minutes of some of the take home points you've taken with you today. Yep, uh, happy to do that uh, Guy and, and thank you for you know all the ones that are 
are still with us. Um, um, it's actually always interesting to watch these um, statistics. You know, we, we had 61 people that registered to the event, 30 actually came, um, you know, and started with us. And, and here we are with about 17 uh, participants. So we, we are following the norm, you know, of, um, uh, uh, of the statistics, um, but very grateful for, for all the ones that stuck with us throughout the process. So uh, as you've heard, I mean, uh, Mark very eloquently uh, with support of, of Richard as well, gave us the overall journey that has happened in this in this natural capital journey or, or world where, you know, first we explored on how we could do things now on how we should and trying to get to some standardization, but soon this will be a must. And I think that that's one element that I want to emphasize a bit more strongly perhaps than we have, because we've been a bit gentle with that, but nature will be the next area of disclosure by the financial community. You know, we didn't talk too much about the Task Force on Nature Related Risk, the TNFD, but they are going full steam and they are developing the framework for the financial sector on how to report on nature disclosure. And EU is really um, 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 also spearheading, you know, all these efforts. So even if companies are not feeling the heat yet of having to report their biodiversity related risk or their nature related risk soon they have as they had to do it for climate and hopefully we can learn them then from the climate debate so what we've heard and hopefully what you have taken as way away is that there are a lot of frameworks a lot of tools out there with the capitals coalition with we value nature we've tried to try identify these navigators these tools that help you through the maze and the jungle of all these uh, examples, experiences, uh, and, and case studies. And that's where I really encourage you to go to the natural capital journey, look at it and, and click on the various buttons. What we try to do is to really have an effort in highlighting based on the maturity level that you are. And it's not you as an individual within your organization, but it's how your organizations or how you can pass it to colleagues as well within your organization on where they are on that journey, then they can hopefully find themselves in the maze of all the tools and methodologies and case studies and examples that are out there. But we need catalysts. We need this broader public and private coherence. And that's still a difficult space. Uh, we had, you know, within We Value Nature, a whole example of that. And we still are lacking case studies where we are showing really the coherence between the two. And I know that EU level, some of the projects are, are, are working on that because there's a clear acceleration needed. Now, the acceleration, in my view, will be pushed by the financial sector, and that's why we're working with them as well. That's why we're doing some specific training, you know, for the, um, uh, for the uh, integrating the biodiversity element um, into uh, the, uh, the, the practical applications. And this is where then the word application becomes important. And also the fact that there are a lot of actions that can be taken and nature-based solutions is one of these spaces where action can be taken, um, where then suddenly the business, the financial sector, the governments, and then all the stakeholders in the landscape can come together because they can look at, at how they contribute together on developing uh, projects where nature thrives, but where you're addressing a societal um, uh, challenge as well. And these will be the, 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 the last reports uh, that, that this project will be focusing on um, tomorrow. We actually have a day in Switzerland, uh, so on the borders of the EU, where we are building a marketplace and trying to get people that are um, uh, presenting projects to come together and actually present some nature-based solutions and hopefully getting corporates and financials uh, on board to come and actually venture this. And the idea is we want to see if this marketplace where in one day we're bringing all these partners together is something that needs to be replicated and could be replicated in other European countries and then discuss with the EU um, uh, or other uh, networks uh, on, 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 on how to, uh, to do this. Um, so I did ask a question in the... Um, in the chat about have we reached critical mass? Have we got mainstream? Um, my view is that it's still a handful of companies and it's still a handful of individuals within companies that are very knowledgeable and advanced in this topic. We need each and every one of these to help us advocating 
um, you know. But the other element that has come very strongly out of COP26 and is coming out of COP15 and the more business related events, and I just come out of a finance uh, orientated um, uh, conference, is there's no need to wait to get to action. Let's get to action and then figure out on how we are reporting and disclosing on the actions. Because in order to report on actions and how you're addressing biodiversity and nature related risk, well, it needs actions in any case. So let's get on, let's look at what's feasible. Very often, sometimes companies and um, uh, investors are already doing things, but they don't relate it back to biodiversity or don't relate it back to nature because they haven't made that link. So each of us that are now a bit more educated, we should be searching and watching for all these actions that are happening on the ground and then help them frame them in, in, in the various uh, standards, tools and guidelines that are out there. Because once you actually add all these small actions together, you suddenly realize that in aggregation, there's actually already a lot, uh, a lot happening. And um, to a certain extent, a lot of common sense is already happening out there on the field. Now it's up to us to bring that visibility up at a more global uh, uh, level. Commitments are out there, actions are happening. We just need to create that link uh, between the two. And this is what We Value Nature has tried to do, but we know many other networks that have contributed to We Value Nature have also been doing. Um, thank you again for your attention. And uh, Guy, over to you. Many thanks for that, uh, Gerard. And um, um, we're getting pretty close to where we want to uh, end our call. We'll, we'd like to run a final mentee, if we can, if you've still got the energy to, 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 to do this. So here's a final question for you. If you'd like to go to uh, menti.com again, uh, we've got the question coming up, I hope. Here we, uh, here we go. Just a reminder, go to menti.com. This is, uh, you may be familiar with this, this is the transition, uh, the transformation curve that the Capitalist Coalition uses. It's very similar to the curve that uh, Jan showed um, from the EU BNB platform. Um, so this is a transition from, um, uh, from what, uh, what the Capitalist Coalition calls uh, we could um, involve uh, get get to work on valuing nature to we should to we must and it's over around a, a 10 15 year time period and you see we put a gradation on the bottom of the chart here from one to ten so one is we're still very much in the we could phase and 10 is we're well into the we must phase and our question is where are we on this scale of one to ten in europe where is european business on this transformation curve? Is it nearer the one end or nearer the 10 end as a whole, European business as a whole? So please do go to Menti and give us uh, your answer on that. So we, uh, we're seeing at the moment, looking around the lower end of the scale, is that going to move at all? I think we've probably got most of the answers in. Thanks, James. So I think it's going to sit there. So thanks very much, everyone. So uh, that's pretty much as we expected. Um, it's sitting uh, quite a long way down in uh, the scale in the beginning of the we should section, which pretty much calibrates with uh, the Capitals Coalition's timeframe for this. Um, we should was, I think, calibrated for 2020 to 2025, but there's clearly quite a lot of acceleration to, uh, to go. We're maybe getting near to that critical mass that Jan referred to of, is it four, eight, 12%, but maybe we're getting there. Um, so we may be at that tipping point that others have mentioned uh, that uh, it's not gonna take a lot more to really get that acceleration um, uh, running fast. But that gives us a nice kind of, launch point for our second dialogue, which will take place in January. We did or have publicized it for the 20th, but we will be moving that. So keep your eyes open for a new date uh, and we'll let you know as soon as possible to enable, that's to enable our commission uh, colleagues to uh, join us uh, in full force. Um, so thank you all so much for joining us today and for staying with us. Um, it's been a very uh, rich uh, exchange and um, we look forward to seeing you again uh, on the uh, on the second dialogue in January 
and we will share with you um, the various outputs, slides, and recording from this uh, dialogue today. Thank you so much, and goodbye. Hi. Perhaps yes. you want to highlight what the second dialogue is about. Uh, we did that at the beginning, but I can do it again now. Yes, absolutely. The second dialogue will be forward-looking, and uh, we will um, focus on uh, what is it that still needs to be done to uh, accelerate this transition to nature positive. So it's a forward-looking dialogue. Um, uh, we will outline some of our views from the We Valley Nature side. We'll be canvassing your views as, as uh, the We Value Nature, the uh, Valuing Nature community around Europe. And we'll be hearing from the European Commission as to what they've got planned, uh, both in terms of Horizon Europe support and in other uh, uh, ac actions, whether it's regulatory policy or other financial instruments to support this transition to achieve the ambitions of the European Green Deal. So we very much look forward to you joining us for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank bye you bye. for Thank you. your participation. Bye-bye.